Hey dude, what's up? Evan from Stock Music Musician in my new studio. Certainly unfinished, a lot of work to do. That'll be happening soon-ish. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to make a video for you showing you the best way to sidechain your kick drum and your 808 in Reason. This video is gonna be for you if your low end feels flabby and undefined, or if your caboose is just a little too loose. So see how to use sidechain compression and figure out how to tame your low ends to get the 808s to sit with your kicks. But before we go any farther, I put together a free reason cheat sheet on how to make great hip hop tracks every time. It lays out the recommended instruments, tips and tricks, everything you need to get started making great beats and reason every time. There's a link down below to click it, so go do that, join up, and I'll catch you after the intro. All right, so here we are in Reason. We've got just a very simple track here, but we got a basic drum beat, and we've got an 808, and just a little piano for, uh, you know, fun, I guess is the word we'll use. So uh, what I wanna do is show you how to sidechain the kick drum to the uh, 808 bass. I wanna tell you why that is important, and I also wanna show you a few more things at the very end that you can do to help your kick drum, and your 808 coexist. Let's take a quick listen, then I'll explain the basics of sidechain, and then I'll show you the specifics. So, real simple. Here we've got an 808-like bass, not exactly an 808, but um, I wanna show you just what it looks like on the frequency spectrum. We'll solo it. If you've got small speakers, it might be a little hard to hear, but the whole principle behind this is basically when it comes to any frequencies, when there are two things making sounds in a similar frequency range, it gets really hard to distinguish between sound A and sound B. If you've ever had two people talking to you at the same time, you notice how hard it gets? Well, that's even trickier on the low end where our ears just aren't as sensitive to perceiving sounds. So let's look at what the 808's doing. A lot of sound right around here. And let's look at what the whole drum, the drums as a whole are doing. Also a lot of, um, we can actually solo out the kick. It's basically the same exact area. So what we need to do to make them work together is basically noticing that they're in the same frequency space. We've got a couple of options. We could change the octave of the kick or of the bass. And now they're clear, but they really don't gel. So instead what we can do is shift them not in terms of frequency, but in terms of time, uh, for a very brief millisecond, what we can do is mute the bass so the initial punch and attack of the kick comes through, and then it drops back down and the whole body of the bass can still be there. That is side chain compression. It's basically like having a very teeny tiny little man uh, in your computer, uh, turning down the volume of something every time it's triggered. Uh, and so let's see how that actually looks in Reason. You can just go here into your bass. Uh, I like to do it in the insert effects section for organization purposes. Go down to effects and then go to just the good old fashioned M class compressor. Now, a regular compressor, all what it's going to do is it will, there's a little tiny man that still turns it down, but it just does it based on the sound of the instrument itself. So right now, the bass, when the bass makes a sound that's too loud, the compressor will turn it on. Or it will turn on the compressor. So you see it goes down. And 
and that's based on the base itself triggering it each time. But instead, what we want is to have it so that when the kick hits, when the kick is loud, the bass is quiet very briefly. And that way they can live together. So what we're going to do is hit tab to flip over the rack. And you notice here you have this thing called side chain in. So that basically means you have to take an audio file or an audio cable in Reason and connect it to the side chain in. So a really easy way to do this with a Kong. I actually, I like to create separate channels for the kicks and all of every instrument on Kong, but that's complicated and we're not going to get into that right now. But you can just go to the aux send out of the Kong or anywhere else that you want to get an audio file from, audio information from. And now we can also send the kick, oops, we've got to select the kick channel and send it to aux one. So now every time the kick hits, it's going to send information out of aux one into the side chain in, telling the side chain compressor to turn on. And then these controls here are going to tell us, tell it how much to turn the volume down and how quickly to turn it down and how quickly to let it go. So now let's listen. Also, if you see a red light, it means the side chain is active, which is what you're looking for. You see now it's going every time the kick hits. And so the threshold is like, how much of a signal does it take to turn down, turn on the compressor and how much does it turn down by? So with a really extreme setting, you almost get like an EDM style ducking thing. The ratio controls how much it turns it down by. And this is completely off, for example, or just a very subtle amount. And I recommend, you know, aiming for about 4 dB. That seems to be a good amount where it's not noticeably pumping, unless that's an effect you're going for, but the two can kind of coexist. Then you have the attack and release, and this is basically how quickly does it turn down, and then how quickly does it turn back up. And this is kind of kind of be song dependent. He says as he drinks his coffee. Um, but usually if you're using a side chain, you want it to trigger really quickly because you want it to get out of the way fast. Um, and then you want the release time to basically be long enough that it doesn't feel obvious, but fast enough that you can get back to uh, a reasonable volume and adapt release can really help with that. And to me, that sounds pretty natural. Um, so that is the basics of how you would sidechain in Reason. Let's turn solo off though. Let's say you want to sidechain a bunch of different things. Well, with this bonus tip here on sidechaining in Reason, I'll show you how you can have one kick drum control or one signal control a bunch of different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and add a utility called the spider audio merger and splitter. I know it's pretty scary. I hate spiders. Um, and so what we're going to do is now we're going to send the kick drum to this spider here. And what that does here is now it creates four additional outputs. It turns one into four. So now I can bring this into the kick drum. I mean, into the bass, the 808. And then if I wanted to, I'm just going to hold down Alt to create another compressor on the piano. Remember, we had that all these years ago. Um, it's not routed, but we'll do that real quick. And now we'll take the side chain from there, or the side chain input on that one. And now it's also going to be routed to a copy of the kick. And let's say you need to do a lot of these. Well, you can just keep chaining spiders together, which is basically my nightmare. But, you know, you would just drag one of these on and so on and so forth. So let's just listen to how it ha sounds to have everything pumping together. That's 
myself in way too extreme. But it creates a lot more balance. So a few other tips on just getting the 808s to sit if you're still interested. Uh, I think something that can really help is just throwing a little bit of a high pass filter on both of them to create a little more low end room. Our ears can't really hear below that. So um, this is just gonna get a little more headroom. Another thing you can try and do is experiment with tuning the kick drum a little bit. You can actually usually get away with maybe pitching the kick drum up a, a little bit and it will create a little more space for the sub. And then you can put limiters on both the kick and the 808. I, these are things that really do benefit from um, being smashed because they're not particularly, especially an 808 is not dynamic. So you just want to control it on the peakiest frequencies. So we'll just go with um, the M class can maximize it. Turn on soft clip and. Um, get some. goal here isn't to actually make it louder, it's just to make it denser. There you have it. This is how to use an 808 with the kick drum, make them set to glue a lot better, and how to expand it to more instruments if you're interested. So don't forget to go download that free guide to making hip hop beats and reason. There's a link down below. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more great videos. Thanks. <laughs>